sorry about that. Sorry about the first one. The first, the first video broadcast was cut off. Can you come on in and let's do this? Let's do this. Let's learn something. Let's learn something. Let's acquire some knowledge. Let's see what God will say to us today. I feel charged up that somebody's life is about to be transformed today. Somebody is about to receive an impartation that will bless your life. I feel it in the spirit. Something is about to change in somebody's life. Natalie, God bless you, my daughter. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, beginning from this broadcast, you will continue to see breakthroughs after breakthroughs, miracles after miracles. The Lord will show himself mighty in your life. There will be a sign that you belong to God. In the name of Jesus, there will be a sign that you are of God. In the name of Jesus, come on in. Invite somebody to come on in and let's do this to glorify the Lord. How do you deal with a difficult authority figure? How do you deal with a difficult father? How do you deal with a difficult boss? How do you deal with a difficult husband? How do you even deal with God when he's difficult to you? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? How do you deal? Rena, Rebecca, God bless you. Jacqueline, God bless you. Hey, everyone who is coming online, God bless you. It's good to see you. I love to see you like this. God bless you. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. Vida Mousy Kofi, please, you are my prophet. And I want my brethren to know how I deal with you. <laughs> uh, I know you are coming to say one of those things. <laughs> But hey, today is not that day. <laughs> today is not that day at all. Huh? Today is not that day at all. How do you deal with the difficult of Bless you, Daddy. God bless you. My father is online live. Hey, there's no father like my father. My father is better than your father. <laughs> uh, that is just pulling your legs. He's an awesome man of God. Amen. How do you deal with a difficult authority? Say, for instance, your, your father doesn't do the things you like. Your boss doesn't do the things you like. Your husband doesn't do the things you like. How do you handle such a person? Oh, Sharina William, God bless you. Leonie McFarlane, God bless you. <laughs> Mousy says, okay, God bless. You got the message, right? <laughs> How do you do deal with that an authority figure you are supposed to be submitted to, and yet the person doesn't do the things you like? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with the situation? What do you do? Kona, body, Zantani Makayo, in the name of Jesus. How do you deal with that, such a situation? Because me, I know I'm a very difficult person to handle. I'm a very difficult person. So how do you deal with me? <laughs> Is that a good way to ask the question now? How do you deal with me? <laughs> oh, Jesus. My God. Is it still interrupted? Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, I salute. Daddy, Daddy is calling me by all my titles. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm a very difficult person to handle all. So if you are supposed to submit to me, how will you handle me? Hey. is hard. <laughs> My God. Kadivelu Matelia. Regina Ball, God bless you. It's been a long time. Wow. How are you? Where are you? Are you in Egypt or you are in Australia? Where are you? Regina Ball, please talk to me. Let me know. Rina, God bless you. Anastina Amwa, Auntie Tina, God bless you. How do you deal with me when I'm so difficult? You see, so Mousy says very, very. <laughs> that means my boha mouth. My boha mouth. George Nasaki says with prayer. Amen. With prayer. With prayer. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. Vida Mousy says, I love my daddy. I know. 
comparatively, you put, if you put me side by side with my father, Reverend of Fosubuahen, mm -mm, I don't come anywhere close. When we talk about fathers, the man is impeccable. You can't fault him. But when you're dealing with someone like me, <laughs> me, I'm difficult. Kai, I'm difficult. Now, let me tell you why some bosses and some authority figures can be difficult. Okay? Let me tell you why some bosses and some authority figures can be difficult. If you know why, maybe you will be able to handle them. Okay? What you will do will be different from what you've been doing. If your husband was difficult, why is he difficult? If your, your boss was difficult, why is he difficult? What is making him difficult? I'm telling you, Reverend Felix Ofosuba in Daddy Bakope, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> John Reed, you are not wrong. It was funny. It was just funny. You short change. <laughs> you short change his bed. <laughs> short sheet his bed. He <laughs> will regret ever being difficult, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I want us to understand some things, a few things. Jacqueline says, forgiveness and humbleness. That's a very good answer. Very close to it. Very good answer. It's, it's very, very good answer. Why do some bosses become difficult? Spirit of your way. Kanamaya. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Eunice Akello says you carry fire. Praise God. Praise God. Why do some bosses, why do some authority figures become so difficult? Why do they become so difficult? Now, do you know that it is God who are, or arranges who should boss who and who should father who? It is God who arranges it. It is God who places some people in your life. The authority people, the authority figures that are in your life, it is God who has placed them there. Kuya Jewa says submission is the key. Yeah, that is key, that is key, that is key. So I want you to know how you can react. How to react when your boss is difficult. When you, how to react and overthrow his difficulty. When your father is difficult. When your, when your husband is difficult. How to react and overthrow that difficulty. Amen. Am I repeating myself? <laughs> Edmund, Edmund, Prophet Edmund says, stop thinking of them as difficult. Yeah, my God. Padosh, Puma, Intani Kadobi Apabu. So, when your father is difficult, what makes him difficult? Now, one of the main things that makes your father difficult is one thing. One thing is the main thing here. When you have a long destiny ahead of you, when you have a huge destiny ahead of you, and you are supposed to be strong, God will give you a father that is difficult so that that father can bring out that inner tenacity, the strength of character, the kind of tenacity you need in order for you to have that distant destiny when your destiny is a big one god will make sure that he puts you through fire through the authorities he places in your life and so when your father is difficult how do you handle this father after you understand what i'm talking about how will you handle this one not every father is going to be easy with you i tell you you need a father sometimes. You need a father that is going to be harsh with you. You need a father that will make you to stand on your own two feet. You need a father that will not spoon feed you. Sometimes you need a father that is difficult. And God can even be difficult sometimes. You pray one prayer and God is not answering. You are praying. You are on your knees. You are fasting. And it seems as if God is not answering. Why is God not answering? You have a very big destiny ahead of you and you need the strength of character to be able to face that destiny you need that inner tenacity not to give up so easily so god is putting fire on you in order for you to be able to build the character that will give you that destiny that is ahead of you because that destiny will not come on a silver platter a big destiny faces big challenges 
A big destiny faces big challenges. And if your destiny, as big as it is, is going to come to pass, you need to face some challenges. And you need that strength. Are you hearing me? You need a strength to be able to face the challenges in your destiny. And your father is a blessing to you. Your boss is a blessing to you. It doesn't matter how difficult they are. They are still a blessing to you. So how do you now handle them? How do you handle them? How do you now handle them? You know how we see, you, um, uh, uh, Prophet Edmund says something about you not seeing them as difficult. See yourself as difficult. There's something in you that must die. That is why that boss or that father is difficult. Or that even that husband. Because you cannot pass on that difficult person that is in you to your children. The reason I use husband is because the husband is an authority figure over the wife. Okay, so if a husband becomes difficult, what do you do? Do you just cut them off? Because this one is too difficult. Go find somebody, someone who is much easier to handle. Do you just cut them off? Do you just uh, put in a divorce and, and, and sign them off so that you will be able to get another person who is easier to handle? That means that you have shortchanged your own destiny, which is a great destiny, a big destiny. There are some people, listen to me. Uh, there's a lady called Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer was abused when she was a child by her own uncles. Right? She was abused by every authority figure. And even till now, her husband is somebody that she doesn't really like. <laughs> and she says it openly. She doesn't like him because the guy is not as like, he, like her. The man is not like her. The man has his own easygoing life. This woman wants to be always on point, always on the, on the go, on the job. Yet the woman, the man is just easygoing. He doesn't really even bother about anything. If something is going wrong, he will just pick up his golf stick and go play golf. How do you handle such a person? Now you need to understand that God loves you enough to give you a father who is that difficult. That is the first way to deal with it. First, understand that God loves you enough to give you a father who is difficult. God is loving enough to give you a boss who is difficult. God is loving enough to give you the kind of husband that is difficult and challenges you and makes you pray. Cardos. Because, you see, if there was no challenge, maybe you would have never prayed. And when you don't pray with the kind of destiny that you have, with the kind of destiny that you have, if you don't pray, you might never make it in your destiny. So all this is part of the blessing that God is bringing to you. Difficult authority figures. Difficult authority figures. You're working with the boss. The boss never sees any good in you. He's always on your back. That is it. He wants to see the best in you. Difficult authority figures. They challenge you to bring out the best in you. I like that. Tasha says, I don't want no weak husband. I don't want no weak husband. They, not, they must... Every authority figure in you, in your life, must be able to bring out the best in you for your destiny's sake. Now, if you are going to be a good father yourself, you must learn to be a good son or a good child first. You cannot correct your father. Because if you correct your father, the same mistake your father is making that you think you are seeing, you will make it. You cannot. Anytime you attempt to correct your father, listen to me, anytime you, you attempt to correct somebody that you are supposed to be submitted to, you are breaking the rank. And when you break the rank, you, you, you subject yourself to challenges that are impossible for you to overcome. You are seeing mistakes in your father's life. But hear this. Do you know how your sons and your daughters are going to see mistakes in your life? The best way to become a good father yourself is to be the best son to your father. Am I telling somebody something here right now? The best way to become a good father yourself in the time when you are a father is to be the good son or good daughter that you are supposed to be to your father. Not, it's not the time to be asking questions. It's not the time to be, to be questioning him and trying to um, correct him and trying to make him to be right, to be a good father. Listen, he needs to be the kind of father so that you can also be a good father. When you learn how to be a good son or a good child of your father, you will have something to pass on to your own children. 
your responsibility in the life of that authority figure is to be the best submitted person in that authority figure's life. If not, when you get to your time, when you now become the authority figure, you wouldn't know how to handle it. I'm telling you. So just imagine that you were there as a father. Just imagine. And then your child comes to you and begins to correct you. All right? Daddy, you are not a good father. You are supposed to be like this, be like that, be like that. Tonya, God bless you. That's a powerful scripture. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Difficult people will reveal what exactly is in one's heart and what comes out. Amen. But to correct, it's like the anointing flows from the head. The Bible says in Psalm 133 that the Oh, the, the Bible says in Psalm 133 verse 3, it's like the oil upon the head that flows to the beard and through the skirts and to the garments and to the skirts of the garment. So anointing always flows from the head. Anointing never flows from the garment up. You can never correct your father. You can never. It's not possible for you to see a mistake in your father and wish that your father changes. And so you approach him and say, Daddy, you have to change. Once upon a time, some people came to me and they were asking me about uh, some things that they thought they had seen in my father. So I need to talk to my father. Otherwise, I'm not being a, a good person in his life. Uh, you, know, you know how people say we need, we, we, we need to surround ourselves with people who can challenge us and talk to us so that if you are in somebody's life, don't just be a yes man in the person's life. Listen to me. In my, in my own, watch this, in my own approach to life, I always am a yes man to my boss. God bless you, Apostle Abel. God bless you, Apostle Abel Peniel. God bless you. It's good to see you. It's been a long time, though. It's been a long time. Jacqueline says, I found out. I find out that whenever there is a challenge, something good is coming. Challenges pushes me to pray. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, hear this. Anytime you become uncomfortable with, with authority, and you attempt to correct authority, you've broken the order in God. And when you break the order in God, you subject yourself to attacks. Anytime you break the order in God, it, there's an order in God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's not Holy Ghost, Son, and Father. No, no, no. And the order never breaks. <laughs> Amen. The order never breaks. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And when, they, when Moses was building the tabernacle, the Bible says he built it according to a pattern that was in heaven. There's a pattern in heaven. And in the pattern, there was the, there was the outer court, inner court. There's the outer court, holy place, and the holy of holies. So three in one. Edmund, Prophet Edmund says, examine your own behavior. If people continually attack you, it could be that you are attracting the wrong types of people. For example, if you are overly negative, other pessimistic people might flock into your life. Okay. I flock to you. Try to find friends who are engaged in positive behaviors. Amen. That's powerful. So there's a pattern in heaven which is not broken in heaven. And anytime you break it, you are not heavenly. And if you are not heavenly, you are not covered. And if you are not covered, every attack comes on you. Every attack comes on you. So you need to maintain the order in your life. The Bible says Moses was told to build the altar, the, the, the ark. Oh, that was it called. Moses was told to build the tabernacle according to pattern. Amen. According to the pattern that was in heaven. So he was supposed to, he is like, the reason why that, that tabernacle would have been the place where God would dwell is because it follows the pattern of the act, the pattern of the heavenly, the heavenly, you know, design. God has designed it in heaven. The, 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 there is, there is the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they don't break ranks. They don't break ranks. And if any time, listen, Anytime there's a breaking of ranks, you see demonic activity working. In the book of Revelations, the satanic force, the devil is described as a beast with ten heads. How many heads? Ten heads. But God is only one head. Chapter Dabusk. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Are you hearing what I'm saying today? 
Tasha says, difficult authority brings out the difficulties in you to make you different. Hallelujah. If there was no difficulty in you, for instance, if you were in authority, perhaps you would have been worse than that father or that boss or that husband. If you were the one in authority, you would have been worse. And so God intentionally brings these people into your life in order to prepare you for the day when you get into authority. He brings difficult people into your life in order to prepare you for the day. So you take it in good faith. Take it in good faith. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. Thank God for a difficult boss. And accept that it is good for you. Prophet Edmund, difficult people always stand out. They don't bend in. They will always be among us. Yeah. Amen. It is good for you to have a difficult father. It is good for you to have somebody who is not going to be spoon feeding you all the time. It is good for you to have somebody who will be harsh with you. It is good for you to have somebody who will make you strong. Soldiers are not submitted. They are not subjected to easy treatment because they are soldiers. And if you are a, a soldier who has always been subjected to easy treatment, when you get to the battlefield, I'm afraid for you. Soldiers are always treated very harshly. Because you know why? When you stand in the battlefield, a one bullet can take you out. One bullet can take you out. And at that time, if you have not been trained well to listen to authority and instructions and follow instructions to the T, you will be in trouble. So you need that authority figure to be harsh with you. If your authority figure is easy with you, then I pity you in the day of attack. I pity you. If you are always finding people who are easy to handle you, your, your boss is under your control. Your father is under your control. Your husband is under your control. I pity you in the day of attack. I pity you in the day of attack. You need a difficult authority. You need somebody who will be harsh with you. You need somebody who will be tough with you so that it prepares you for the day of battle. You don't want one bullet to take you out. Are you hearing me? You don't want one bullet to take you out. You need that harsh treatment so that you, you learn to obey before complain. You learn to obey before complain. Uh -huh. That is the motto of every, um, every army officer, every soldier. What they do is obey before complain. When the commander says, lie down, you don't say, ha, why, why should I lie down? Don't you see the place is muddy? How can you tell me to lie down? The place is muddy. Hello. Are you talking to the iPad? <laughs> she learned to use Siri. She learned to use Siri. So she's talking to Siri on the iPad. <laughs> Amen. Hey, Abigail Mensah, God bless you, sir. I mean, God bless you, mommy. Amen. How could I even say, sir? <laughs> That's amazing. That is strange. Praise God. Are you learning something today? Oh, yes. Boot Camp 101. Boot Camp 101. I'm telling you. We need a harsh treatment. If your father is just easy with you, you can tell him, Daddy, um, today I want you to come and do this for me. And he's rushing to come and do it. Daddy, I want you to do this. And he's rushing to come and do it. And he's always at your beck and call. And he's always the one you control. I pity you in the day of attack. Because in that day of attack, you would need somebody who will be able to tell you, Hey, do this. Everett, do this now. Do this right now. And then if you don't do it, one bullet can take you out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What kind of believers are we bringing up today? When they leave one church, they leave because the pastor is difficult. Hey! When they leave a job, they leave because the, the boss is difficult. You want an easy boss. How can you want an easy boss when you are a Christian? Jesus. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 13 verse 1, he said, let every power be subject unto the authorities. Let every, let everybody be subject to the authority because every authority is of God. Every authority, even the unbeliever is of God. The authority the unbeliever has over you is of God. I want to make your life better. I want to make you better. That's why I'm telling you these things. 
I'm telling you these things because I want your life to be better. God bless you, Auntie Phoebe. <laughs> Amen. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. The powers that be, God gives you the, the authority according to how he wants you to be. According to the destiny he has for you. God gives you authority according to the destiny he has for you. If your father was at your beck and call, please, it's not a good thing for you. If your authority was at your beck and call, that you are so important to your authority figure, that he is the one doing everything for you, it is not a good thing for you. It's not a good thing for you. Even Jesus, at a point, God, God separated himself from him that the man had to say, Eli, Eli, Lamak, Sabak, Tani. How mean, meaning, my father, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? God had to forsake him for a period. At the time where he needed God most. Why? Because God was subjecting him to harsh treatment so that the guy will be built up for the glory that is coming. There was a glory coming. And God had to lift his hand off his life in order for him to see hardship, hardship and hardness. You need hardness in your life. You need to be tough. What happens if you call your father and he doesn't pick up? What happens if you call the prophet and he doesn't pick up? Is that a time to complain? It is a time to see that this is a time God wants me to stand to my own two feet and be strong because the attacks that may be coming are bigger than me. What happens if you need somebody who could speak to the devil and the devil to, to run away and that person is not answering you. What do you do? What do you do? The Bible actually lets me know that there's no temptation that comes on you that is not common to man. Every temptation that comes upon you is common to man. And so if the temptation that came upon you was so harsh, it seemed as if the devil would take you out and you are calling for assistance yet you don't get. It means that God knows there's strength in you to be able to handle it. The Bible says he has already make a, made a way of escape. He has already made a way of escape. And so you can handle it. You can handle it. I said you can handle it. I said you can handle it. I know that a lot of people would prefer somebody better than me to be their prophet. I'm telling you, a lot of people will prefer somebody better than me to be their father. But hey, it is not good for you. You need a harsh father like me. I am harsh. I am harsh. <laughs> I am harsh and I'm not saying it because listen I know that somebody might be promoting themselves by telling you how good a father they could be but I'm not a good father I'm a harsh one I will make your destiny to shine I will make sure that you do you know how to suffer you know how to suffer difficulty and come out of it ah apart from that what else is it Listen, there's always supposed to be suffering before glory. Suffer before glory. The Bible says the glory that is about to be seen in us is not worthy to be compared with the suffering we are having. That means they cannot be placed on the same platform. If you suffer this much, it means that your glory is like this. If you suffer like this, it means your glory is like this. If you suffer like this, it means your glory is like this. So it, the more you suffer, huh, the more you suffer, the more you know that your glory is big. My God, when there's a challenge, look inside. Look inside. At the time when you seems, it seems like everybody has, uh, has um, uh, what do you call it? Turn their back on you. Look inside. There's a solution in there. Am I talking to somebody here today? Am I talking to somebody here today? Amen. Anointing flows from the head. It doesn't flow from the bottom. So you need to be submitted enough to understand that this treatment is bringing me oil, is bringing me anointing, is giving me strength, is making me hard, is making me strong. It will bring me to the place I need to be. Oh, Jesus. It will bring me to the place I need to be. This treatment is not to kill me. This treatment is to make me better. This treatment will make me better in the day of struggle. In the day of attack, it will make me better. My God. So, listen. Listen. You have a harsh daddy. That's right. Naomi, that's a good one. Star girl. God bless you. 
It's a good thing for you. If your father was not a disciplinarian, that's why all your brothers and sisters are all over the place. I'm telling you. If your father was not a disciplinarian, that is the reason why your brothers and sisters are all over the place. You don't need that kind of a father. Your father needs to be a harsh one. Your father needs to be a difficult one. He doesn't need to play according to your drums. He doesn't need to drum, dance according to your drums. He needs to have that, that, that tenacity to see you and say, hey, you are going too far. Stop it now. And you don't like it, but you take it. That's how a father should treat a child. Am I talking to somebody here? That's how a father should treat a child. You don't just go out, anything that you bring in, he says, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Anything is fine. If anything is fine, he's spoiling you bad. He's spoiling you bad. He's spoiling you bad. Oh, Jesus. A difficult boss is making you better for the job that you are supposed to be in. Good evening, Sophie. God bless you. Oh, Sharina William, this message is meant for me. My God. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who God wants to speak to, but. Amen. Every authority, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Every power in your life, every authority in your life, is ordained by God to be there, whether difficult or easygoing. Do you know something? The only time your father is not difficult with you anymore is when he has discovered, God has discovered that that difficulty in your life has been dealt with. The only time your father now becomes easy with you is because now he has realized that God has realized that that difficulty inside of you that would have made you an impossible person to handle has been killed, has been destroyed. Then that difficulty goes away. So how do you deal with a difficult father? It's the difficulty is inside of you. That's why you're seeing it in him. So let that difficulty in you die. Let submission be complete. When submission is complete, your father will love you. Your father will not be harsh to you anymore. <laughs> when submission is complete, your father your authority figure, your boss, will not be harsh with you anymore. Submission is complete. And mind you, submission is not being a doormat, doormat for anybody. Submission doesn't mean that you lie down for them to walk on you. No, no, that's not what it means. So if your husband wants you to submit to the point where you lie down and, and let him walk on you, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about here at all. I'm talking about submission is when you discover somebody's mission and you, you, you go under the mission. You, 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 you forget about your own mission and you go under the mission. You discover somebody's mission in life and then you go under, you, you leave your own mission. You leave your own agenda and then you submit. You go under that vision, that mission, submission. You go under the mission of another person. Because a lot of people have their own agenda. They must bring their agenda to pass. And that is not good for you. They must bring their agenda to pass. Hear me? There's somebody God is preparing to bring your mission to pass. So your time, your seed must go in the ground. You must sow the seed of submission so that you can get someone to submit to you, yourself. Today we see people who have not even completed Sunday school. They've not even completed Sunday school. They want to handle churches. They've not gone through their Sunday school. Listen to me. Their Sunday school curriculum. They've not gone through it. And they want to be pastors of churches. They want to be pastors of churches. They want to handle a whole congregation. You don't know anything. You yourself need deliverance. But you want to cast out demons from somebody's home. You are the one going to somebody's house to go and consecrate the house. No wonder. The same house you went there with oil to go and cast out devils. That same house is the place you are fornicating in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you didn't have what it takes to be able to stand temptation. You didn't have what it takes to be able to fight demonic attacks. So now, in the same house, you are there fornicating. Because you have not even completed your Sunday school curriculum. 
May God have mercy. Today, people are not willing to submit to the end. Everybody who is harsh to them is an evil person. Listen, I'm not talking about somebody who doesn't like you, who doesn't have anything to do with you. Huh? I'm talking about your authority figure. If your father was harsh, how would you treat them? If your father was difficult, how would you, how would you be able to handle them? If your father was impossible to handle, how would you still handle them? Amen. The purpose of that harsh father, that difficult father, is that there are some difficulties inside of you. There are some things that are difficult for people to handle inside of you. You are not at your utmost. You need somebody rough enough to be able to sharpen that side of you. You need somebody who is rough enough to be able to bring out the shine in you. You need somebody who is rough enough. And that's why you sometimes have authority figures in your life who are difficult. Most of the time, when you see somebody who is ready to, you know, like politicians who tell you all kinds of sweet things, vote for me, I will help you, I will make your everything good. You realize that in the end, they came to deceive you. Like politicians, that's what they do. Especially in this democratic era where people are democratic, you know. I have my say, I can, I can vote for whoever I want to vote for. You vote for the person because the person told you a lot of good, 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 good things they are going to do for you. Right? At the end, you realize that they lied to you. So if somebody is posing, posing themselves, you know, they, they, they are pitching for you to be their son. And they are all out there telling you how sweet they can be, how good they can be, that you, you are going to be, you are going to be treated like a king when you are supposed to be a son. Don't believe the lie. I'm telling you, don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. <laughs> don't buy into it. I've had my fair share of those experiences. I've had my fair share of such people. These are politicians in spiritual clothing. They are politicians in spiritual clothing. They come wearing spiritual attires. Like they are spiritual people that can really make help, make help come for you. But hey, they're just politicians. And they lie just to get their way. They get their vote and that's it. Are you hearing me? Your father doesn't need your vote. You don't vote for your father, do you? Is it gone? Oh. Let me fix it for you. All right. It's back on. You won't let it go. Oh, dear. Let me see if I've got to let it go on here. There you go. Let it go. Amen. Jacqueline says that's true. Joan Reed says yes. Regina Ball says that's right. Many of us are voting for our fathers. If my pastor is not good, I choose another one. You want to vote for your father? He's not your father. Your father is never voted for. Your, va your father, you don't vote for your father. You don't choose your father. Your father chooses you. You are blessed when the father chooses you. Mm. My God, you are blessed. You don't vote for your father. You don't choose which one will be good for me. This father will not be good for me. That one will be good for me. You don't choose it. It's God who decides it. How do you know your father? You know your father by the things that are born in you the moment you get close to him. The things that are born in you because he owns your life. He gave birth to you. He gave birth to you. So naturally, we are talking in natural terms. Naturally, because he gave birth to you, everything in you is given birth by him. Now, spiritual fathers are the same. Spiritual fathers are the same in the sense that because they have given birth to you in prayer, they've already prayed for you. They've covered you in prayer even before you met. Before they knew you, they had already covered you in prayer. God has seen their prayer and then drew you to them because they were praying for you without even knowing that you were being prayed for. 
They didn't even know your name, but they were praying for you. And so God just drew you to them as an answer to the prayer that they prayed. And then when you got close to them, things began to happen. That's why you judge who your spiritual father is. By the miracles that begin in your life, immediately you contact them. The moment you get in touch with the person who is supposed to be your father, doors begin to open. Because you see, now your life is born. Now your life is born. The moment that contact comes, it's not a matter of prophecy. It's not a matter of laying hands. It's not a matter of anointing. It's not a matter of pouring oil on you. It's not a matter of what he saw about you. It is just because the moment you spoke with him, life began. Life began. That is your father. And you don't choose that father. It is chosen by God. It is God who chooses it. And when that father is in your life, you need to be, you need to have the strength to know that this father, it doesn't matter how tough he is, he is your father. Is that your spiritual father? Tasha? <laughs> huh? Are you understanding what I'm saying? You don't choose your spiritual father. You don't choose the authority. It is the authority. Listen, God chose the authority for you and brought you guys together because he knows the best for you and he puts that person under you. And it doesn't matter. Listen, the Bible says of Hagar, Hagar, Hagar was running from her mistress and the angel of God appeared to Hagar and said, go back to your mistress. Go back to your mistress. Is it gone off? Really? Oh, the battery is gone. Battery is gone. Battery is gone. We need to charge it first, okay? You want to use this one? You want to use this one? Okay. People, <laughs> she wants my phone. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. <laughs> she wants my phone. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you are somebody that have problems with authority, you never actually realize your destiny in full. If you have problems with authority, if you have problems with authority, you will never realize your destiny in full. You will never. Because authority is coming to your life to sharpen you and shaping you for that destiny. So you need, you need to be you need to have the sense of authority, huh? the sense of authority being good for you, whether they're harsh or difficult or whatever. I was sick, they didn't call me, that's it. He's not my father anymore. He's not my father. A father should be able to know when a daughter is sick, when a son is sick, to call the son and pray for the son. <laughs> you are shortchanging yourself. <laughs> so really, Uchena, God bless you. When she needs correction, I correct her. But right now, I, don't, I can't stand it. I, I, would, I don't want her to disturb me. <laughs> Amen. I don't want her to disturb me, so I give her something to shut it up. Amen. But honestly... Have you thought about it? My father, at a point in time, I felt my father would have done certain things for me, but he didn't. He didn't. I realized that he was doing those things for people. Eh? Are you hearing me? He was doing those same things I wanted him to do for me. He was doing it for people who didn't even qualify. I'm not going to go into the details of it because it's not necessary. But I just want you to know that there is your, your, your father, the difficult father you have is because there's something in you that must die and that difficult father will kill it. 
before your destiny can arise. Are you hearing me? There was a time, my spiritual father, there were things that I wanted him to do for me. And he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He bypasses me every time. What happened? Is it stopped? Oh, I okay, it's, it's working again. Ah. He bypassed me every time and did the same thing that I was looking for for other people who didn't even qualify. I tried my best to be the best I could just to get his favor, just to get him to do that thing for me. He wouldn't do it. But when the time came, I didn't even ask. <laughs> when the time came, he did it. Now it seems as if me and my father were like best friends. But it wasn't always like this. It wasn't always like this. And I need you to understand that it's because there was something in me that needed to die. And he was supposed to see to it that that thing dies. Otherwise, I would never have been qualified for my destiny. So you need to be thankful for the difficult boss. Thankful for the difficult father. Thankful for that difficult husband. It's helping you. It's getting you to a place where the gift in you, the destiny in you, the calling in you will be able to come out. Are you ready for that? Can I pray for you? Let me just pray for you. As you go through the challenges that you're going through. There are things that are bothering you, I'm sure. There are things that are bothering you, I'm very sure. There are things that are bothering you. What, what, what happens? Listen. What do you do when um, you go to bed at night and you have a dream and your father is the one that is doing you? The devil plants a dream in you. Like your father is the one doing you. What do you do? What do you do? If your mom was a witch, what would you do? If your father was a witch, what would you do? Do you approach your father and tell him, hey, your witchcraft will find you out? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> your witchcraft will find you out. You, you would die. You would die. You would die by fire. That's how your destiny never rises. But when you know how to handle authority and authority figures who are difficult, your destiny has an easy float up. Your destiny rises easily. Hallelujah. Your destiny rises with no struggle. You just make sense. People just like you. It's not a pretense. They just fall in love with you. Why? Because you. there is nothing in you that attracts disfavor. Oh, Jesus. Let me pray for somebody. Okay, let me pray for somebody. Father, touch this person who is listening to me right now. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory come upon their lives, O oh God. Let your glory be seen upon their lives, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. The reason why Jacob was able to steal the blessing of Esau was because Esau did not deserve it. Esau did not deserve it. Esau was the one that the father was handing out handouts to every day. Because your father loves you, he's just handing out you know, handouts to you. But the father did not love Jacob. Because his father, Isaac, did not love Jacob. It was the good treatment that Jacob needed. That was the treatment Jacob needed for his destiny to really come out. The reason why Esau missed that blessing was because he did not deserve it. They sent you to go to the farm or they sent you to go to the field and get venison. And venison means there are some goats. Listen, venison is a kind of meat that comes from uh, a certain type of a goat. Now, there are wild goats that sons or or these 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 herders they are able to go out there and capture and bring home are you hearing me now these these herd, herdsmen they are able to go out there to the field and bring these goats wild goats home and tame them and make them make them home home goats right now in those days jacob isaac had a lot of these ones at home but he wanted the son 
to exercise himself in difficulty for once. So he sent him out there. He said, go out to the field and get me venison. Meanwhile, he had many of the venison at home. So he wanted the son to exercise himself in difficulty before he can qualify for the blessing of his destiny. This guy went out there and it took him several hours. Several hours. And hear me. The father was not going to be sitting down there being hungry and waiting for you. So guess what? When Jacob came, and Jacob came with deceit, the father knew that this is, this is Jacob. The father knew. He knew. He said, that, 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 he said no. The voice is... <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, Osofo, God bless you. Pastor Kwesi Ousu and Sa Amedi. God bless you, sir. God bless you. You are amazing. Huh? So he sent him out there just to teach him a little bit of hardship. Just a little bit. But this boy went out there. He's so playful. He saw he's so playful. He plays with every instruction, including his spiritual father's blessing. You see, the blessing will come with a difficult instruction. You don't play with that instruction. And he went out there. It took him several hours. By the time he came, they were, the, 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 the venison could be caught and killed at home and prepared and served to the father. And the father releases a blessing after eating before he came. Ah! Listen, if, if, if he was really, really, if he was really deserving of the blessing, he would have come to meet them preparing the meat. I'm telling you. Oh, Isaac Ofori, Kwame Ofori, God bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I sent you an email. Did you get the email? I sent you an email. Did you get the email, my brother? Because I saw your, I saw your um, note on the, what's it called? So I sent you an email. Yeah. Yeah? I believe I can speak to you after. God bless you so much. He spent so long, so long, going out there to get the venison. If he was really serious, if he was serious, he would have come to meet them preparing the meat to go and take his blessing. He would have come to meet it. That would have been a serious, he would have then qualified for the blessing. He would have qualified for it. If you are not serious with the instructions of your father, even if it is a difficult one, hear this. You are not serious with the instructions of your father, you don't qualify for a destiny. You don't qualify for a blessed destiny. But I pray for you today. Maybe I'm not your spiritual father, maybe your father is somewhere. But I pray for you today that you will come under the grace to be able to submit and submit to the end to receive the blessing of your destiny. When the blessing is on your life, it makes a difference to you. The blessing is what makes a difference to you. Uh, the blessing is what makes a difference to you. You need it. I pray for grace to come upon you. I pray for you to be able to endure hardness. I pray for you to be able to suffer difficulties, even from difficult fathers. I pray that you will be able to suffer challenges, even from difficult authority figures, so that you can be able to earn the right to enjoy your destiny. God bless you, Osofo. Osofo says, wow, this is deep. God bless you, sir. So, when your father is difficult, it's not just to be, you know, he's a bad father. If he's not careful, he will lose all his sons. So, so you see pastors who are leaving, church members who are leaving churches just because the, the pastor is not good. We have made church to become like a, a, a customer service point. We must serve the customer. The customer is always right. Because you've been exposed to a consumer society. You think church is like a consumer society? No. My brother, my sister. Church is a place where your destiny is brought out. If you were ever to be a soldier, you would know what I'm talking about. If you leave, you have gone. You are not a soldier anymore. And you leave and go and join the army or go and join the police or something. Because you know that police people, they don't subject them to that harsh treatment. So go and join police. 
second best. You can be only second best. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Army me people, soldiers are subjected to harsh treatment. And if you can't take it, go and join the police. You cannot be in the first best if you have to. You have to really suffer it. Amen. Man of God says, may I earn the right to receive the Father's blessing? Yes. Hallelujah. How, what do you do with that disobedient father? That is in terms of when you command him, he doesn't obey you. Or how do you know that he's disobedient? <laughs> like I said, every authority is of God. Romans chapter 13 verse 1. Every authority is of God. The only way that disobedience can be felt in your life is that you feel the challenges of the disobedience. See, see uh, David. David in the house of Saul. David in the house of King Saul. The challenges that boy went through is what qualified him to be the kind of father, the kind of king that he is. Uh, 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 he was. Are you hearing it? The challenges David endured in the house of Saul is what made him qualify to be the kind of king that he was. My God. All your spiritual fathers are living in sin. Wow. The only reason why you may be able to see how sinful they are is because maybe there's that desire to sin in you yourself. God needs to put you in their life so that that desire to sin will die. Are you understanding? Like I said, if you see difficulty in them, it's because that difficulty is somehow in you that needs to die. If a spiritual father is that sinful, how then is he your spiritual father? How do you deal with a difficult husband who does not listen to you? It's supposed to be the other way around. <laughs> it's supposed to be the other way around. Because the pattern in heaven is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So in your home, it's supposed to be husband, do husband, wife, children. It's supposed to be like that. So that there's no breaking of ranks. So who should listen to who? Anointing flows from the head. You can't see it. You don't like it. You don't have to cry. Okay? You don't have to cry. What do you want? Which one do you want? Tell me. You don't want this one. Do you want... Um, let it go. Do you want to let it go? All right, here you go. There you go. You don't want it. Are you tired of yourself? Okay. So it's the other way around. You understand? It's the other way around, but sometimes um, there is that difficult, it's hard for you to be able to submit. So God wants to kill it by making him a very difficult person. <laughs> oh, wow. It's 2 a.m. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Regina, she slept. It's 2 a.m. Okay, okay. <laughs> Amen. You don't like it. Oh, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. Okay, people, let me leave this with you. Amen. Let me leave this with you. She's quite upset. So let me leave this with you. The difficulty that you're seeing in him, in the authority figure, it's probably something that is in you. It's hard for you to submit. 
And if it is hard for you to submit, how will you be able to transmit submission to your own sons or daughters when you come into authority? Get this. So it's a seed you sow. Oh, you were crying. Oh, she was crying. Yeah, Tasha says, but if your husband is a wise man, you should take your suggestions into consideration. But that still doesn't mean that he has to listen to you. Anyway, uh, we don't have to be like um, so harsh on wives because at the end of the day, the wife is not a slave, a slave to the husband. Okay, it's just it's just an it's just an order of authority. It's just an order. The divine order that must be followed but honestly it's not like you're a slave to your husband you are not a doormat that he should just trample on you anyhow you see but sometimes it seems as if we feel like we are wiser than those that are in authority over us it can never be true like i was telling you about my own experience i felt as if uh, my father should be able to do something for me he's not doing it for me he's doing it for other people but I needed to reach the point where I will be strong on my own and say, Lord, even if he's not willing to do it for me, I should be able to do it for myself. And when I got to that point, to be honest with you, that, that desire in me to, you know, to cry about my father's treatment of me died. And immediately, me and my father became like friends. Until today, I mean, anything he wants, Anything he commands, any instruction he gives, I am willing to follow it to the T. Why? Because I realize that that desire in me to do what I desire is, is gone. Many of us are too focused on ourselves. Benny, you can't eat all of that. It's minty, it's too hot, okay? It's peppery. You want that one? Okay, I have, I have this one. Yeah, it made me strong and it made me an achiever. It made me somebody who can never fail. No matter the kind of challenges that is left, is given to me, I will never fail. Why? Because in the time that I was looking for my father, oh, my father should be able to open some doors for me. At least you should introduce me to some churches. Let, let people invite me. I mean, tell them that I can preach so that they will invite me to come and preach. He was not doing it. He was rather doing it for people who didn't even qualify. <laughs> and I did not complain. Today I'm saying it. He might, he might even be hearing <laughs> because I saw him. <laughs> I saw him in the background. He might even be hearing what I'm saying today. But I didn't complain. You know, oh, that he do something for me. I didn't ask him to. I didn't ask him because I realized that mm, maybe there's something I am supposed to do. Maybe there's something I am supposed to do. Maybe there's something in me that must die. So when I looked inside, I discovered that there is enough power in me to achieve some things. You know, and so I went out there and I began to achieve. And then I came to submit it to him, Daddy, this is what I've been able to do. And he was like, proud of you, son. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm looking for a day when sons and daughters uh, will not be whining every time, like whining and whining over every little thing that their fathers do. Oh, my father is like this. My father is like that. My father is like this. My father is like that. Nah, nah. The moment you see a mistake in your father, you have broken the order. You've broken the rank. And once you break the rank, you've opened yourself to attack. And that is not right. That is not good for you. God bless you. I'll come your way again very soon. I need to go and pick up my daughter from school. God bless you. Where are you from school? Yeah, you need to go get Brianna.